everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I've got an exciting new build to share with you guys today. Today we're going to be building up the Ming 135th scale Rolls-Royce armored car. And actually, this is a, a two-in-one type kit. It doesn't show it on the box right here, but there are two distinct variations you can build with it. The first one is the 1914 version, and the main visible thing that you'd notice immediately on that is it's got very skinny tires and wheels, and they're also spoked wheels on it, so very, very reminiscent of very early cars. And then there's also the 1920 version you can build out of this kit, which has steel wheels and big, big fat tires on it. So after World War I had ended, they were using these for all different types of things. In fact, I believe even to the beginning of World War II, there was a few of these still being used around. So my plan is, is I like the World War, the early World War I version, where you have the, uh, the spoke tires. They're made out of photo etch. So my plan is I'm going to start working on those, see how those come out, and if they're easy, and I can build them pretty well, I'm going to make that version. If I mess them up, I have the 1920 version to fall back on. Um, also, this is going to be a little bit longer video because a few people have asked for a little bit more in-depth on some of the processes of doing things. Not, not too crazy long, but just a little bit longer. I'm going to show you a little bit more how things go together, especially when it comes to the wheels on, on this kit. A good way of putting them together where you aren't going to have much trouble with it. So, uh, I love this the shape of this vehicle. It's something that I've always you know watching all the different old world war one movies and if you see anything like this in it this shape is so cool especially with the spoke tires so i'm very excited to get started on that so this this kit offers all kinds of painting variations and just a lot of fun i think just to be had on it so let's get started So let's start this kit off. We're going to start off with the, the chassis to begin with here. And there's probably about 20 parts here right now. And these represent the first four steps of the kit. And like I said earlier, we're going to start the chassis off. And makes it pretty easy. There's lots of pins and holes to line everything up with. Just a matter of getting the glue in the right areas, of course, and making sure it all sticks together. Now this part right here doesn't have a lot of meat to grab onto it, so we're gonna let it dry just like this. And while that, maybe not. While that dries, show you this right here, there's this little thin piece here that has a little tab on the end of it. Very carefully, you wanna try to sand off that little burr, because I've, I've cleaned and sanded all these pieces already. But that one is a real difficult one. The best way i found is take a pair of tweezers and clamp around it so you don't flex it, and then taking a light sanding stick, just go back and forth and gradually take that off. So let's go ahead and assemble all of this. Okay, I've let this whole piece dry together and keep it nice and straight. And in retrospect, I probably should have glued in one side of the uh, the other part of the chassis here, uh, just onto one side, because there's a lot more gluing surface to glue onto there. And that would have made this a lot easier to put together, just to keep it straight so we don't have any areas where the uh, thing is gonna be crooked. Also too, when when you're looking at this right here, it's it's amazing how thin or skinny these these old cars from the uh, the teens and the twenties are. Uh, I built that World War One era bus, that London bus, and it too was really thin and tall. And you wonder why more of these uh, more of these vehicles didn't flip over going around corners if they weren't going too fast. Or so with that, we're gonna glue that on, and now I'm gonna kind of speed up and show you how all these other parts go on.
I've now let the chassis dry for a couple hours making sure we kept everything nice and square and now we can start working on the body we've got these back doors right here we've got one on either side they're real easy to put together and also snap this and I'll also glue this in as well to the front part of the radiator uh, but before we do that I want to show you this portion of it we need to start putting in the floor of the vehicle and with that just point out you do want to put this panel in first and there are four little pegs here that will get dropped in this will get dropped in like that and then this it's kind of like the uh, the bed of a truck on on this particular vehicle then this piece comes in because if you put them in uh, with this first you will not be able to get this other piece in so I'll get these two glued on and then this will literally just snap right into place just like that so let me get these other doors on that uh, the bed as well as that bottom floor pan for the main part of the body now that I have that portion of the the body and chassis put together I've put together all the little sub assemblies that are gonna make up basically this would be like the bed of this vehicle here it's kind of more of a truck than an armored car because it's got a wooden bed in the back here and we're gonna go ahead and glue all of these pieces on and as you can see this will slide right into place here with a little glue and we will have a little little tailgate and bed on this vehicle so let me put all of these pieces on right now showing you this little portion of the build as we put the sides of, on here and you want to get all three of these sides put into place at the same time or really really close that the glue is still wet and that way you can make sure you can seal off any of the gap back here so you don't have uh, too flared out on either side this way we can get all three sides to line up just perfectly put a little extra cement on that and then let that dry completely once that portion of the of the, uh, the bed dries, we can go ahead and start putting on these wooden be boards right here, which are basically going to be the uh, the wheel well for the the back of the vehicle. Make sure those all fit into their little grooves just the way they're supposed to be. And then once that gets fully dried, the front of the wheel well will be this wooden board right here that'll get glued into place and it'll actually it goes the other way it'll those little pet pins will line up into the running boards but I'm gonna get these glued on on both sides first and then we can start attaching the boxes and then eventually the running boards okay we've gone ahead and attached like the armor front doors which I've left in the open position on the front of the vehicle plus all these little grab handles things like that and now we can go ahead and attach both the front fenders, which I've already put the running board and front fender on this side of it here. And they go on super simple. There's just two little tabs. Lock those into. Get that to sit to where it is. And then you basically just drop this into place. There are three grooves on the bottom here, which will get glued in as soon as that gets uh, a little bit harder with the glue there. And then with that done, I can go ahead and put the lights into place which you can see here I've got built up have not put the lenses in yet uh, obviously it makes it a lot easier to put those in after we paint but those will get glued right onto the top of the fender here for the uh, the 1914 version the 1920 version with the different wheels does have a different set of lights on it but I'm going with the earlier ones and as long as I don't mess up the spokes on the wheel uh, we're going to continue on with that. So I might leave these off to see how I actually work with the wheels. And if they come out okay, I will go ahead and put these into place. Well, I've got the first tire and wheel assembled here with the photo etch spokes. And came out pretty good, I think. And I will show you, hopefully, a way that you can do this that will not cause you too many problems. First of all, you want to start off with the piece of photo etch, as you can see right here. There are gaps in here on each one of these little segments. And what that does is it allows the, the photo etch to bend so you can get the, uh, the panned effect. So the spokes look like they stick out rather than just being flat. So the first thing we have to do is if we notice here, there is a thick tab and a thin tab inside there. And that corresponds to the inside of this. So 
This is the the most difficult part, and that's holding on to both of these pieces at the same time. So I'm going to use a touch of super glue and nip. See there, what I'm talking about? It popped right out of my hand because of the shape. So I'm going to use a little bit of super glue and get that piece glued into place off camera because it's kind of tough to do that. And then I'll show you the next scene. Uh, it's a lot easier once you can grab onto the photo etch. There we go. Actually, that one wasn't too bad. After I got a hold onto it. It kind of fit right into place there. And we put just a little bit of super glue on there. There will be a poly cap that is going to go inside of here with a little tab that's going to cover the poly cap on. But we're going to do that absolutely last. Because uh, you can still get at it no matter what. Now, on the other side of this little hub, you're going to see a moon shape on one side. And we're going to apply a little bit of super glue to that. Just a touch around in there. And then we're going to put the corresponding moon shape of the other side of the photo etch on just like that. And don't push them together yet. We want this to dry first before we start uh, making those shapes on it. So we're just going to lay that down like that and let it fully dry for about maybe 10-15 minutes. Almost forgot too. While that's drying, go ahead and put the hub cap here on the outside because there's already a little bit of glue on there so with a little bit more it too has a half moon shape too so it should line up just like that there snap into place there and let that fully dry so now we have a nice firm set of uh, spokes on there next up now that this is dried go around lightly and just start to flex down, not completely all the way to the to the bottom, but about halfway to get the spokes to start to conform to that. Then flip it over and do the exact same thing on this side too. And don't worry about getting them to meet up yet. That's not super important at this state. And just get it roughly in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this Bot, um, other half of the wheel, they come in halves right here. We're going to run a thin little bead of super glue around the out the inside rim there. Put that inside, and then basically we're going to go in and just sandwich the two together, just like that. Let the super glue set up, and once it sets up, you'll have the wheel just like this. So it's a little bit difficult getting everything, you know, holding and having the camera in the way is a little bit of a pain, but but you get the idea and honestly, it went together pretty simply right after that. So I have uh, there's two wheels on each side of the the rear, so we have two four, the two spares and of course the two fronts here that we have to work on or actually these are almost done. So I'm going to get all of those wheels put together and I will show you what they look like just before we put them on the vehicle. I started to assemble the rear wheels thinking that it would go together very similar to the front just doubling them up because it's a double stacked wheel in the back but it actually goes together quite differently so I thought I would show you how that goes together and one other quick thing um, totally had a lapse uh, I put the wrong fenders on earlier you may have saw me put these these curved these are the 1920 fenders on uh, I pulled those off and went and put the correct 1914 uh, time period fenders on. So to build the rear wheel, we've got this longer center hub here. Once again, it's got a half moon shape that we will put a little bit of super glue here. And then using the corresponding hub, we were going to let this dry for about about 5-10 minutes. And then I'm going to show you how everything just basically stacks on top of this center hub. Okay, that is dried now. Now we can slightly bend these in. doesn't have to be too, too much just to get a little bit of the shape because the, the actual rubber part of the, the tire is all molded as one piece. So we need to get this in and it will basically drop into place right here, which I will put a little bit of super glue on. And then there is a locking hub that goes over that that will hide all those edges and you can see that kind of just goes in just like that so let me put some super glue on that and then we'll show you the next step here it is with the cap put into place we flip this over and taking the next one very carefully because these flex really easily and I've already put a touch of super glue inside there so we get this to drop into place 
Try to get it to lay flat too. And once that dries, we can take each one of these groups of spokes and push them down into the groove on the other side there. And then this piece, the center hub, will come in and secure those into place. I'm going to let this dry just for a few seconds here, and then I'll show you how we pushed all those in. There we go. That's dried a bit now. And now we just take some, I've got this old knife here that I'll use to push each one of these spokes in there. Just like that. Actually, I think my finger is going to work easier. So we'll push all these in with my finger. And we take this piece right here and we will glue that into place and that'll lock that in. Then next up, we've got two more sets of spokes. Or actually, first set of spokes, which of course I'm going to glue all this stuff as well. This will get glued in like this, and then doing the exact same thing again. The tire will go in on this side, one more set of spokes on the outside, and then finally this locking ring for the very inside. So and you see how the whole thing just stacks together. So once you get done with all that, you'll have something that looks like this that looks pretty nice. Uh, you can see all those individual spokes. They've got a nice shape to them, and I think it's going to really add a lot to the look of this vehicle. Now that we have all of the tire and wheel assemblies put together, we can go ahead and attach them to the vehicle. One thing I'm definitely going to recommend though is on your axles here, because there are poly caps inside each one of the wheel assemblies here, that you slightly sand these down just a little bit here. They are very, very tight and if you push too hard trying to get them on, you can flex your spokes, especially on the single ones. Uh, and you don't want to end up breaking them because they are kind of fragile. So sand that down just a little bit and they'll pop right on and you can still remove them later on if you need to. And there it is with all of the tires and wheels on. They all fit really well and all four tires touch the ground which is always a good thing so we got everything all lined up. I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead before we start the turret because the turret's actually going to be pretty easy. I'm going to go ahead and shoot a coat of gray primer over this, see if there's any flaws that we need to fix or anything, and I'll show you what that looks like right now. Well, there it is with a coat of primer on it, and I do see a few little problems that I have to take care of, but they're very, very minor little things on there. Uh, I've also put the headlights as well as the little searchlights up on the side here. I absolutely love the shape of that vehicle. It is just such, to me, it's such a cool looking vehicle the way it is there, even without the turret on it there. But I love that thing and I think it's going to look good you know, with a paint job. Love the spoke tires. I think Ming did an excellent job. They're easy to put together and they really, really look nice. I also thought I would build up one of the later model 1920 tires. It's just to let you guys see what they are. You can see it is a true rubber tire with a plastic uh, wheel in the middle. And with that being done, we can now build up the turret. And this turret is simple. And when I mean simple, I mean real simple. So we have our base. The edge goes around there. This goes right here, this armor plate in the front. And we mount the machine gun, which we're going to paint up separately there. And then we basically drop this on top there. And that, for the 1914 version, is the entire turret. So, needless to say, I'm just going to glue that up um, off camera because it's going to be super simple. I'm also wondering, I might be able to get the gun painted separately and then come up from the bottom and then hook it into its little, uh, its little pedestal there. Might be able to do that on it. So, let me get that put together and then we're going to put some paint on this vehicle. Okay, for the, the paint job, I'm going to borrow a scheme from another kit that I plan on building fairly soon, and this is a new one from MiniArt. It's their Austin Armored Car 1918 pattern in British Service Western Front. And if we look on the side of the box here, we've got some of the vehicles that are kind of in a khaki green color. As you can see, something similar to this one or this one right here on the edge. But it has a blue turret on it. 
And I'm sure that's to go for like if it's looking off into the horizon, the turret will kind of blend into the surroundings and hopefully camouflage the vehicle a little bit. But I saw that on the side of the box and I really like the way that looks. So we've got the turret right here all ready to go mounted and I'm going to paint that with Tamiya's light blue XF23 and we're going to do that right now. Now we're going to paint the body of the vehicle and for the color I've taken Tamiya's XF49 khaki and added about 25% olive drab to it to kind of darken it up a little bit and we'll come up with a, a nice color that will contrast the light blue pretty well. And here is the vehicle painted up with the khaki olive drab mixture and then of course the light blue for the turret. As you can see it adds a nice contrasting uh, paint appearance to it. Now obviously it looks very bright right now because we've done no weathering at all but I think we're going to remedy that right now. So the first thing I want to do is I want to chip up the olive drab khaki color and we're not going to use our regular chipping color too much on that. We're going to start off by using the NATO black as a chipping color and I've taken a sponge and as you can see we've torn it at kind of a, a pointed angle there and that is so when we go to chip we can get into these tighter little areas and put the chips mainly right around the edges of the uh, where the panels go together we don't want a blunt one where we're going to start getting it all over the place we want to go right in there and carefully highlight both the rivets as well as the the, the area where the panels meet together Now we are doing the exact same thing, this time with our chipping color. Which I'll put on the screen right now. And we want to create a little bit of a different tone of chipping. So we have two different colors on there. And you can see how doing the, the pointed piece of foam helps out a lot for getting it just where you want it to go. And we're also going to use that same color on the turret. Next, on all the areas that are wood, I'm using a little bit of a desert yellow color to kind of scratch up some of the boards. We don't obviously want to have any corrosion on it because they're actual wood product. So just a little bit of, in this case I'm happy to be using Desert Yellow XF59. Now using to me as black panel liner, carefully we're going to go over each one of the rivet heads on this entire vehicle. <laughs> And as you can see, if you do it careful enough, it really makes them pop out. And you want to wipe off as much as possible off the brush. I mean, to the point where there's virtually nothing left on there or the stuff could run on you. So, as you can see, I've got some work to do ahead of me here. And any of these areas where you start to see it pool, don't worry about that because the next step that we're going to do is going to take care of that. 
Now that the panel liner has dried a little bit, we're taking just a flat brush with a little bit of mineral spirits on it and just going around and lightly tamping on the areas around those little rivets and stuff and that way it'll blend it all in and we won't have those harsh, harsh contrasting looking uh, effects. I've actually already done up there a little bit there so just keep working on that real lightly and you'll see how it all will start to blend together. And I'm also going to take a little light rust wash and we're going to just put a few little few little dots here and there. And then with that same brush with a little bit of thinner on it, slightly drag it down. And hopefully you can see the subtle little little rust streak coming on there. We don't want it too, too strong, but just enough to catch the eye. And here is what the armored car looks like with the weathering dry, at least the weathering that we have done so far. I need to go ahead and install the, the glass in the headlights right now. We're going to put all of those in all over the place. Also, too, uh, after reviewing the film and editing up to that point, I noticed that the, the whole entire front of the car was lifted up, and it wasn't riding properly on the, uh, on the frame here, and it was because I had forgot to glue that portion of it down. But I have corrected that now, so the whole thing sits, at least the front of the vehicle, sits lower and proper the way it's supposed to be. So I'm going to go ahead and get the glass put in right there, and then we can finish up the final little bit of weathering. Now, the last thing I want to do is put a touch of dirt into some of the little crevices in here. And I'm putting just a little enamel thinner down first. And then we're going to little use a little light sienna. Let's see if I can get my hand out of the way in here. Just put a little bit of this dirt deposits into some of these little areas where you'd imagine dirt's going to build up on it there. And it's real hard to see right now because it's not dry. It's obviously the enamel thinner keeps it, uh, keeps it kind of dark. But what I'll do is I'll put that on there, and then after it dries, I'll come back and show you in the final reveal what it looks like. Well, here we are, guys. Here is our completed model. And I have to say, I had a lot of fun building this here. I admit, when I first opened the box and saw the photo-etched spokes for the, uh, the, the wheels, I was a little concerned about that because sometimes Photo Etch and I don't get along too well. But I have to say the way they've designed it and the instructions were pretty clear and had no really no problems at all putting the Photo Etch on. So that was a, a definite bonus. Overall, the kit is really, really nice. You saw how it went together during the, uh, the build. No problems at all on it. And I honestly think it, it is just a, a cool-shaped vehicle. And I, I like the 1920 version with the, uh, the, you know, the bigger tires and the solid wheels. But there's just something about the, uh, the teens versions, the you know, 1914, 1918 version through that area that really gets me. And I like this with the blue turret on it. It's, it's just different and unusual. And you don't see it all the time on there. And I can really see it going into diorama, especially if I get the, the Austin armored car built up. And we can do kind of like a, a, a little bit later in the war, but still use the uh, the spoke tires on it there. So I would definitely recommend this kit. Uh, it is available right now. It's actually been out for a few years now. It's just been very difficult to get a hold of this kit in any mass numbers, but it's finally starting to, uh, to come in. In fact, I know we have quite a few of them on our website um, at the time of this, uh, of this video going out. So there you go, guys. I want to thank you as always for watching, and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.